Have you ever wondered why planets stay in orbit around the sun? Let's explore this fascinating question today. Let's start with the fundamental force that keeps planets in orbit, gravity. Gravity is like an invisible glue that connects all objects with mass in the universe. According to Newton's law of universal gravitation, every mass attracts every other mass. The sun, with its enormous mass, pulls on each planet, creating a gravitational force directed inward. Newton formulated this relationship mathematically. The gravitational force between two objects equals the gravitational constant g, multiplied by the masses of the objects, divided by the square of the distance between them. In this equation, F is the gravitational force. G is the universal gravitational constant with a value of 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. M sun and M planet are the masses of the sun and the planet respectively, and R is the distance between their centers. But if the sun is constantly pulling on the planets, why don't they crash into it? The answer lies in how fast the planets are moving. Think about throwing a ball on Earth. If you throw a ball horizontally, it curves downward and eventually hits the ground. If you throw it faster, it travels farther before hitting the ground. Now imagine throwing it so fast that as it falls, the Earth's surface curves away at the same rate. The ball would never hit the ground. It would be in orbit. It's the same with planets. They move sideways fast enough that as the sun's gravity pulls them inward, they continuously fall around the sun instead of crashing into it. This perfect balance between gravity and sideways motion creates a stable orbit. To understand this balance more precisely, we need to consider centripetal force. Any object moving in a circle needs a force pulling it toward the center. This is called the centripetal force. The formula for centripetal force is mass times velocity squared divided by radius. For planets, gravity provides exactly this centripetal force. When we set these forces equal to each other, we get an interesting result. The gravitational force, g times m sun times m planet divided by r squared, equals the centripetal force, m planet times v squared divided by r. We can cancel m planet on both sides, and one factor of r. Solving for v, we get that the orbital velocity equals the square root of g times m sun divided by r. This equation tells us exactly how fast a planet needs to move to maintain a stable orbit at distance r from the sun. In reality, planetary orbits aren't perfect circles. Johannes Kepler discovered that planets move in elliptical paths, with the Sun at one focus of the ellipse. This is Kepler's first law. Even in elliptical orbits, gravity still pulls toward the Sun, but the planet's speed changes as it moves, faster when closer to the Sun and slower when farther away. Another way to think about orbiting is that it's a form of constant free fall. An orbiting planet is always falling toward the sun due to gravity, but its sideways motion makes it continually miss and go around instead of straight in. It's like if you were to drop a ball from higher and higher with more and more horizontal speed each time. Eventually, it would just keep falling around the Earth. To summarize why planets stay in orbit, first, the sun's gravity pulls planets inward. Second, planets move sideways fast enough to fall around. The sun third, gravity provides the centripetal force needed for circular or elliptical motion. And that's why planets maintain stable orbits rather than spiraling into the sun or flying off into space. The delicate balance between gravity and motion creates the beautiful orbital dance we see in our solar system.